Good morning guys, good morning internet, good morning YouTube. This is EJ back again with another narrated art time lapse video where I get to take a look back at some of my old artwork that I did and you know just kind of talk about the process a little bit. Maybe some uh, new beginners can learn a tip or two from me and you know as well as old artists might find some of my style interesting which honestly my style is so unique uh that i don't <laughs> i don't really think anyone would find it all that interesting if you're a pro just because most pros have a very sad standard of working and technically i can work um according to those standards but i kind of found my unique voice and the way i do things so yeah anyways <laughs> whether you find it interesting or not is not really the point the point is we're looking at something that is real time so really that is the most exciting part about this video um so yeah um anyways let's talk about this artwork and what this artwork is all about this artwork is done for the daily spit paint uh on the facebook uh in Facebook groups. It is one of the groups in Facebook and it's a very cool group. Uh, basically when conceptart.org went down um, I obviously was kind of hurting for daily sketches or hunting for like daily sketch prompts because I always like doing prompts you know. It's always like fun and challenging to do a prompt that's like <laughs> you can't think of how to illustrate you know. Um, and so I found daily spit paint in Facebook group which is like an amazing group because it gets my juices flowing every day uh, every day that I do it my creative juices flowing every day I, it gets my creative juices flowing every day I visit daily spit paint but anyways that prompt for this particular day which oh man I wish I remember what day this was I can't for the life of me think of what day it is oh it's on the title <laughs> what am I thinking February the 5th. On February the 5th, one of the prompts for that day is headless. Um, Daily Spit Paint uh, puts out four prompts. I decided to choose headless. And this was really interesting because headless, typically when people think about it, uh, you would think you would think of like the headless horseman. Uh, that's typically denoted in like uh, Victorian horror fiction or whatnot um, so yeah I remember that day a lot of people uh, illustrated headless swordman horseman because that was like one of the first things that come to mind um, me on the other hand I was kind of thinking about illustrating that but you know like what I normally do um, right before I, uh, I do the daily spit paint is I do a Google search Technically, I'm supposed to do the Google search within the 30 minutes, but I actually do it before, but I give myself a limit just to make sure that I don't, you know, I don't overdo it because really hunting for good images will take forever. I mean, it could literally take days to find a good image, you know, so I set uh, a firm rule, you know, not to exceed like 10, 15 minutes. And if I can't find a good image within 10 to 15 minutes, I just wing it is what I do um, in this particular case I got really really lucky because I did a Google search and literally it lasted maybe like two or three minutes because after I type headless to do a Google search as soon as I scroll down below um, it showed me a mannequin you know and I was just like oh there we go I already knew what I wanted to do which is like a street scene kind of like a breakfast at Tiffany's street scene you know where there's this girl outside in front of, uh, in front of a department store um, and she's looking at the display window and there's headless mannequins and I was like that makes sense and I think that would make a good composition so why not do it <laughs> so this is what I did um, so yeah as soon as I saw the mannequin um, I, I did another quick Google search for like storefronts and whatnot just to get like a good idea and, and none of them really you know was a good enough reference image um, there was just this one that kind of gave me a perspective that kind of helped me with perspective but it was like a daytime scene I knew that I wanted a nighttime scene 
and so that didn't really work out as a peer reference so in a way I kind of just wing it <laughs> so and you could tell that I wing it and you could tell that I decided not to follow any of the references because as you can see the perspective is way off like way too wonky um, if I don't set my perspective grids um, or if I don't find a good reference you know if I just try to sketch off the top of my head I always have really horrible perspective issues and this is a part of the reason why I decide to go ahead like half the time when I do you know some of my three hour speed paints half the time I decide to just block things out in blender because it helps so much with the whole perspective thing not only does it help with the perspective thing it also helps with the lighting um, but yeah when I try to freehand something without laying out some um, vanishing points and perspective grids uh, my perspective and my composition lines get really wonky but there's always a good fix to it um, one of the things you could do in digital painting, um, most digital painting softwares have an option to flip the image to help you, you know, look at the image from another the, another perspective, another point of view, and you could correct yourself, you know, you could correct all the perspective issues. So this is what I was doing earlier when I was, oh, that's what I just did just now. I just flipped the image again just to recheck. And as you can see, I'm rebalancing it again, you know, and yeah I just do this constantly back and forth and back and forth until finally like the perspective looks good in both sides and once it looks good in both sides that's pretty much when when I just go with the flow um, but yeah as you can see I spent about roughly seven minutes on the sketch you know um, which is over my budget typically when I do my daily spit paint I try to aim for five minutes you know just five minutes sketch it out get done <laughs> get, it, get it done and over what and move on to the next part which this is my next part um, as soon as I have my sketch I just grab my random mech brush uh, that's set to like varying hues and I just kind of just you know put a bunch down you know uh, not really caring about color scheme as much well I do worry about color scheme uh, I try to be conscious uh, about uh, co uh, my favorite <laughs> my favorite color scheme typically is uh, warm versus cool so I typically try to go for that um, and as you can see that's kind of what I did you know where on this illustration where I put all the warm inside uh, in the display window and everything outside is all cool and dark um, uh, so yeah that's kind of like how I set my color scheme but again of course I was using um, the random mech brush to just kind of vary the hue a little bit so it's not just so plain um, and then I went back to the background layer just to kind of remove all the white by adding this purple like one purplish color and um, after that I typically try to darken the sketch just so that I could see it a little bit clearly and then what I do uh, after this random mech layer brushes uh, I kind of go back with a color dodge layer which you just see me add that color dodge layer and then go back and add a few highlights and then after this I would also do a multiply layer and, and kind of like add some shadows but for this particular illustration I don't think I did a multiply layer like I'm almost positive I skipped the multiply layer just because things are already kind of dark so I'm kind of curious if I did or not but yeah it seems like I'm just really just stuck with this whole color dodge layer thing you know just adding a few more highlight to the area and so yeah after the color dodge and the multiply if I add the multiply I don't think I'm gonna add them I was about to say Oh, I, I didn't realize I turned down the opacity in one of the layers. Uh, it must have been the, 
hue variation mech brush layer I think I turned that down a little bit just too fast for me to observe but anyways after I'm done with with those four or five layers I merge everything into one layer and then I grab my favorite blending brush my smudge texture just to kind of smudge everything around oh wait I forgot this one part I wanted to add highlight and uh, to that particular area of the building um, it's like a structure of some sort I kind of wanted that top part to just jut out just to kind of just break that space you know so it's not just so dark bluish um, so yeah I added a highlight but again uh, my standard routine um, I grabbed the blending brush my smudge texture I kind of just smudge everything around and again what I do in this particular step is that I smudge it into recognizable shapes so that once I start my detailing process um, I could read all the shapes that I need to work with so yeah um, and you can see that the lady kind of disappeared because you know when I was going through color dodge she kind of got some color dodge colors on her she kind of faded so I had to go back and you know add a little bit of black or a little bit dark colors so that when I smudge her you know her shapes a little bit fuller and easier to read but yeah um, at this point I'm pretty much on par on on my schedule you know because really the first five to seven minutes is I do my sketch and then like five to ten minutes when I do my coloring and then as soon as I'm done with my coloring I smudge for however long I need to smudge and then I start the detailing process so that leaves me about if I'm lucky it leaves me about 15 minutes of of detailing well sometimes you know there's plenty of times where I just end up with like 10 minutes sometimes maybe even seven minutes because you know the my process gets really whacked out and off and so yeah I just I would try to rush everything but yeah so I'm just smudging everything and I remember the shadows uh, that the building is casting uh, I remember thinking that you know those two light beams would like intersect so like that middle areas shadow would almost kind of disappear like I remember thinking like it should do that so I was like trying to emulate that effect without it looking too weird because like there was a debate in my head whether it would look too weird or not but realistically it should look like that you know like it wasn't a solid shadow but yeah uh, I think you'll see me later on um, like lessen that cast shadow that that beam that separates the two windows is casting but yeah so anyways I'm still um, obviously you know smudging things around so yeah um, now basically after this as soon as all of this is done I'm gonna go and quickly lasso the headless mannequins and change the hue on it just so that you know they would stand out from the background because right now as you can see even when I try to preserve their shape since everything's kind of smudged out and blended there's they slowly disappeared and I had a feeling it was gonna happen you know I kind of knew it was gonna happen so I was already prepared for it um, so yeah in order for me to fix the the blended mannequins disappearing into the blended background I decided to do lasso tool and change the hue so yeah that's where you're gonna see me do in the next few minutes
So this is always interesting, right? Uh, I'm about to resize my canvas is what I'm about to do. And this, this thing that I used to do, well, okay, uh, I guess to talk real quick about why I started out small and then I resized. Uh, Marco Bucci, I got the idea from Marco Bucci and from Richard Wright, those two artists, and they've always talked about doing thumbnails or like when you do your your speed paints to really start out small in resolution size so that you're not, you know, you don't end up trying to detail too much because when you have too much resolution, your tendency is to zoom in and start detailing. But if you have like a low resolution, there's really not enough space to detail. So it forces you to troubleshoot everything that needed to be troubleshoot in that thumbnail size, which is, you know, composition, lighting, uh, perspective issues, all that stuff. You need to like, you know, be able to troubleshoot all that without adding any of the details. So for the longest time, that was what my practice was. Typically, when I start out, most of my paintings was that I would start out small. Um, and so that's how I did some of my daily spit paints um, until about like a month ago, maybe a month and a half ago. I kind of changed tactics when with, with doing my daily spit paints. Um, the reason why I changed my tactics is because um, I found that I was repeating a lot of my process from the small to the big, you know, and so you know like i would do the same steps when i'm in the smaller resolution and then when i resize up i found myself repeating the same moves in a bigger resolution so lately i've been working with a much bigger resolution canvas which is nice you know because then i don't have to repeat some of my steps but the big problem with big resolution is that sometimes my brush lags just because i don't have that much of a powerful computer so, you know, there's caveats to like, uh, to, to working on big, so yeah. But anyways, Margot Bucci and Richard Wright, um, has such a good tip about working small. And, you know, if you're not rush like I was, because you're doing, you're not doing like a daily spit paint like I am, um, it's always advisable to, to just start out small because again like I said it always forces you to not detail too much and to just focus on like the big picture essentially but yeah um, anyway so I've always talked about like lasso artists and how I'm not that much of a good lasso artist um, I've mentioned who are like my favorite ones like Jordan Grimmer and Dominic Mayer I mean they're all like good lasso artist but I do know the technique you know um, which is kind of like what I'm employing right now um, so you just saw me do a marquee selection around the windows right um, and the reason why I did that is so that I could sharpen the inside um, because I've started my my uh, detailing process and again uh, I've mentioned this numerous times in my video I, I know it gets really boring that I repeat it but just for the sake of uh, repetition sake um, my detailing process is pretty much broken into three steps um, which is delineating my edges or making my edges sharper uh, accentuating my shadows and adding highlights and I repeat that for sections in my photo you know Sometimes I zoom in, sometimes I work very zoom out like the way I am right now. Since most of the shapes are very, very simple, I'm working, I, I'm having a very easy time working zoom out. Uh, but if the shapes get really complicated, I zoom in. But anyways, so I'm like in the delineating stage where I'm like trying to sharpen everything. And as you can see, I'm sharpening where the ground starts. Um, I mentioned this earlier about the whole light shaft uh, making that shadow almost disappear so you can see me trying to emulate that real life effect you know and I, I question myself whether it looks realistic enough but you know I really don't have the luxury of 
of second guessing myself especially since it's a spit paint you know so I kind of just had to go with what you know I have I mean so far it's good you know and then after all this um I'm trying to remember what happened afterwards. Okay, it looks like I'm still trying to sharpen the ground. Uh, yeah. But yeah, anyways, I'm using the lasso tool to help me get some smart, uh, sharper edges. That's what I did with the windows earlier, you know. And then as soon as I got the inside sharpened up, I reverse it by sharpening some of the outside areas. Um, and now I'm doing it on the ground. And I'm going to just continuously marquee select all the ones that I, that I want to work with. Like after this ground is done, I pretty much would zoom in to start working on the mannequins. And what I did is that I would marquee select their arms, turn them into flesh tone, and then marquee select. Um, oh, I forgot this color dodge on the ground. <laughs> yeah, I totally forgot I did that. Um, but anyways, uh, I would marquee select their dresses just to like make it stand out more against the background I remember doing a marquee select on the on the inside background or uh, the background of the mannequins on the inside of the shop like I remember marquee selecting that again and like going back with some colors just to like make the shape stand out more then as soon as all of that is done and over with I would marquee select the lady in the front that's viewing the window uh, just to sharpen her up some more so that her shape would read but yeah that's what you guys will be watching me do for the next few minutes
Okay, so like looking back at this, um, I realized I worked a, a lot on those mannequins, um, just trying to get all of it down. Um, as you can see, I'm, you know, I'm getting really nice crisp edges since I did that marquee selection, which really helps a lot. Uh, just get which helps a lot get like a solid shape in um, so yeah it's really nice and yeah so I'm just continuously just doing this whole detailing process you know just kind of have kind of help the shapes read better I kind of almost wish that I have the preview um, docker selected instead of the layers docker selected right now so i, I typically oh there you go <laughs> i just switched back to the overview uh doc area yeah i really wanted to check what it looks like at this point zoom out because that's kind of like what i was thinking at this point like the dress i, I worked on it a little too long like what I should have done was instead of just consistently and constantly working, I should have just zoom out and recheck and see if everything was good. And as I, as you can see in, in the preview window, like everything worked out good. So I, I could have probably saved me like a minute or two by telling myself to stop, you know, but I kind of got carried away and lost at the moment. So yeah, it happens. But yeah, I, I pretty much just repeat the same process for the lady at front which is you know the same process of which of what I just did which is do the whole marquee select thing um, this illustration is really unique because I did the whole marquee selection and the selection and the lasso tool and all the selection tools like I use that a lot in this illustration which I typically don't in my detailing process I just straight up use my my textured pastel brush or I forgot what this one is called but it's basically it's a chalk brush that's what it is um, I basically just use my chalk brush and just go at go at everything with just a chalk brush and just draw things out like as if I was drawing in chalk uh, so yeah um, that's pretty much what I did and at this point, like 30 minutes has already elapsed. Like this is one of my longer spit paints too, um, which yes, I know I violated the rule. I went over the timer. I'm really sorry that I went over for four minutes because I got carried away so bad. But anyways, that's one of the things in 30 minutes spit paint is that you, you know, you needed to stick to that 30 minutes because that's the whole point of the exercise is to, you know, help you with time management basically um, so yeah um, it really helps you budget time but in this particular instance you know since I, I was really digging the illustration and I was really loving like like all the effect that was going on that I just wanted to work on it a little bit more um, so yeah I'm a perfectionist that way what can I say um, but yeah, four minutes isn't really all that bad. If I had worked on it for 10, 15 more minutes, then that's a totally different ball game, I think, in my opinion. Because then that would have been a 45 minute spit paint and, you know, that's just a little too much. Um, so yeah. But anyways, this illustration is one of my more uh, well-liked, I guess, spit paint in, in the group. And... It's always kind of like funny and I think every artist goes through this you know where they do an artwork and they post it on social media and they think they're gonna get like 500 likes on it because they love it so much they're like this is awesome best artwork ever and it gets like zero likes and then an artwork that you know that particular artist just threw you know just did for like two three minutes or something that he doesn't he or she doesn't really care for all of a sudden gets like you know 517 likes and they're just like what why so anyways in spit paint i i get that all the time you know like some of my favorite spit paints you know people ignore and then spit paints that i'm not really 
fond of people would like 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 crazy you know I'm just like why are you guys liking this I don't get it so yeah but this was one of the few illustrations where you know both I and and the people liking uh, me and and the and the group are all in agreement you know like I got a lot of likes in this one and I actually like it too so yeah the first real-time spit paint that I did was black silver 52 I think which I posted a while back that one didn't get a whole lot of likes but I love it love that one and that got like barely any likes but this one people like and I actually like so I thought this was cool because we were like hey we sink <laughs> so yeah um, this is the reason why I decided to choose this uh, real-time spit paint uh, to review for a YouTube video but anyways this illustration is done I mean look at it I zoom out you know look at it from afar check things out and I think everything looks snazzy so yeah illustrations done thank you guys for reviewing that with me i hope you guys like that video like and subscribe i will catch you guys in the next video good night